uh, saw the talks scheduled for this session, uh, I was a bit stunned by the few number of talks about caves, because I will speak about uh, something totally different, obviously. Um, let's say to contrast with a bit of a more open spiced view, I will take about, talk about the elimination and demarcation of sacred spaces without any visible boundaries, or in other words, I speak about any conic standing stones of the Levant. So erecting uh, any conic stones for cultic purposes seemed to be an over regional phenomena which was common all over the world at some point, uh, um, at some point <laughs> of uh, prehistoric times. Uh, so if you have a look at the topic of any conic but cultic venerated stones in the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, you quickly stumble about denominations like Sicanum, Mashba, or uh, Batul, and most likely the publications were focusing on philological aspects like nominations in text sources uh, and parallel parallelism in function and meaning, but archaeological data like information about their context of discovery, possibly uh, classifications and so on were missing in most cases. So um, I started collecting data from excavation reports and publications about uh, cult and religion, and I was concentrating on Syria and the Levant. Uh, it got obvious uh, that the standing stones in this area are nothing but the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the focus on the investigation of this topic is uh, concentrating in this area um, with a written tradition dating back till the time of erection and usage of such installations, uh, till 2015, I was able to identify at least 37 sites with cultic venerated stones in Syria, the Levant, and southeastern Anatolia. This is absolutely outnumbered by, by at least 142 sites, uh, open air sites dating from the 14th millennium BC uh, on in the desert area of the Negev and Eastern Sinai, which were documented by Uzi Avner till 2001. These are only the prehistoric till Iron Age sites. It doesn't mm -hmm. consider Nabataean or later features. Uh, also, there is an uncertain number of erected stones known from the Arabic Peninsula, uh, yet alone information about them is scarce and uh, mainly in Arabic. These installations uh, in a barely inhabited area have uh, been clearly erected with a purpose, yet the data set available for their interpretation is thin. Only 10 of the sites in the deserts have been excavated and more intensely investigated, while dating is obviously a big issue with complexes completely of stone. Uh, so to understand the intention uh, of their erectors, it is most practical way to have a closer look to the features north with a more stable set of information. So the terms Betilai and Mashba are both well known from historical sources, uh, and so it's also the topic of cultic venerated stones uh, familiar, familiar from late antique and biblical sources, uh, like uh, Damasius of Damascus and Philo of Biblos reported the common belief of ensouled stones inhabited of gods worshipped and with the abilities of oracles <coughs> in Syria and the Levant. The most famous one was the so-called Elagabal of Emesa, nowadays Homs, and it was described as a black cone-shaped stone which was fallen from sky by Herodian. Elagabal could be translated as the Lord of the Mountain, El Al Jebel. The authors passed on that these raw stones, probably meteorites, were called betiloi. This, this designation seems to be the Greek version of the Hebrew bet il, translated as house of God. Also well known has been the veneration of stones in passages of the Old Testament. They are named as mashbars, which is most likely going back to the Hebrew root for neship for erected stone. One of uh, the passages referring, uh, with, with a reference uh, to Betul is early in the morning, Jacob <coughs> took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a mashba and poured oil on the top of it. He named that site Bet El, House of God. There's quite a number of information about uh, the use and meaning of mashbas in this passage, that they could be raw stones, that they were erected, that this was done in the name of a deity, and that they were receiver of ritual benefits like sacrifices or liquids or oil. At least uh, 34 reference named the word mashba in the books of the Old Testament, and quite a number more could be interpreted as synonyms like uh, pillar, amud, or stone even. 
With the beginning of archaeological excavations in Israel at the middle of the 19th century, the investigation of pre-Jewish and early Jewish cultic sites was one of the main interests. And in 1871, a French campaign led by Clermont Garneau discovered an alignment of 10 formerly erected stones at Tel Geyser. First seen as a representation of a fertile cult, uh, depending on their conic shape, and they have been identified as part of a so-called Bama or high place containing cultic venerated stones soon. Uh, since then, an increasing number of such mashbas have been found in different contexts, quite a number of them at locations which could be referred to as pla uh, or to places mentioned in the biblical texts. Another perception of the same type uh, of object is passed down from a Syrian find spot. Uh, this is a third millennium, early third millennium Mari, where uh, in 1933 Paro discovered a conic shaped stone in the courtyard of a temple. Paro identified it as a petil, and at the same excavation, an archive with the cuneiform uh, tablet, with cuneiform top tablets was found, and some of them, them identified the building as the temple of Ninisasa, and at least three of them themed at the need to erect a sikanatum for festive acts uh, for different gods. Sikanum could be ascribed to the Akkad Sikin, which is translated into inhabited. These texts indicate that these objects were created of stone and were referred to each um, to an individual god. None of them mention Sikanum as an imagination of one of these deities, so that they seem equal, equal and iconic uh, as the Mashbars and the Batil. Other cuneiform texts of the same period, for example, one from Emar, referred that sacrifices like sheep and oil were offered the gods through the Sikanatum. As we already have seen, one typical place for these installations is a building with a cultic meaning. The Syro Sumerian type of the Sikanatum appears in front of Sele, like in the Middle Bronze Age uh, sanctuary of Ebla, of Tel Mardich. Um, or in separate rooms, as it like this uncommon uh, round one in an otherwise uh, rectangular building in the early Bronze Age Arauda, or also like in Mari, in uh, courtyards. Uh, in the Israeli area areas, they are found aligned along walls in cellar in most cases, as for example in the Middle Bronze Age uh, temple in Hasor, or as in the so-called Holy of Holies of Iron Age Arad. In many cases, they are accompanied by altars and levitation basins. This could lead to uh, another, to the maybe the or original open air sites, uh, sanctuaries known from the Negev Desert area. Um, an example from a hilltop of the Utfa Valley is shown on the right. And uh, also further north, we find such hilltop installations and alignments, as for example in Tegesir. And there are assumptions that some of the cultic areas could also <coughs> be found as such so called Bamas. <coughs> These Bamas are also mentioned in uh, passages of the Old Testament, um, like see quoted here. In Syria, we also have at least one example on, uh, of an alignment at Middle Bronze Age Tel Huera, uh, where the stones may have accomplished a street, which is thought to have a reference in its route towards a temple. This, this leads to another possibility of location on which standing stones were erected. In Mari, three more standing stones have been found at the so-called Centre Monumental in 2004, two of them at the northeastern corner of an artificial elevation. The temple area was erected on, and they seem to face a street, uh, which could have been observed in a stratigraphy. So for that, this arrangement uh, have been interpreted as a sacred street at the outer edge of a temple area. And there are a couple of uh, examples of standing stones of the periphery of sacred areas. One is uh, from late Bronze Age, Tel Mumbaka. Uh, it could be assumed that they mark the border between the sacred and a profane area. And also city gates uh, perform as borders between two contrasting areas of the uh, so kind of uh, 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 the border between the regularity of the civilization and the autonomy of nature. I'll just go over that very fast. Um, so how could that different types of objects could be sequenced? Uh, Betils, Masports and uh, Sicanum are often titled as Stela but most of them aren't shaped in a steloid form or aren't worked at all. 
Their appearance differs also not after their origin or in the chronological matter. We find raw examples from Neolithic evidence in the desert, as well as in Middle Bronze Age, Tejo era. And in the same period, also very fine shaped ones like in the Holiest of Holies in Tel Hazar. They are also defined as strictly any conic representation of housing of deities, but quite a number of the worked ones are also decorated. For, as for example, the famous piece in the middle of the, ten, uh, of the Hazor in Lyman, which appears also in combination with the seating fi uh, figurine and the lion post. One reason why the most of the standing stones were unworked may be found in biblical sources again. But if you make for me an altar of stone, do not build it of hewn stone. For if you use a sizzle upon it, you will profane it. The preference of the natural, unworked surface as a valuation of what the gods of de or deities have created uh, is obvious. This might not have been the main reason for the early prehistoric ones, uh, especially because the numbers of worked stones is much higher in the Neolithic, presumably Neolithic pieces, but might have been an explanation or remodel for the dominance uh, of unworked ones in Bronze and Iron Age. So back to the Negev Desert and, uh, as it seems, the origin of aniconic standing stones in the eastern Mediterranean. Uzi Avner claims that the oldest installation uh, is dating back to the Natufia 14th millennium BC, um, but as I already mentioned, there are major problems dating such feature features in case of uh, Rosh Sin associations with flint tools were the point for dating. Another example is a composi uh, composition of erected small stones in a late pre-pottery Neolithic building uh, in Engasal, uh, Jordan, interpreted as a ritual building. And while evidence is still thin in the early, early Neolithic, at the latest in the late Neolithic, in the 6th and 5th millennium BC, the custom of erecting st uh, aniconic stones for ritual purposes has been established, established, and whereas the Neolithic and calculi Calculitic examples concentrate at the desert areas of the Negev and the Jordan, in the Sumerian early city-states uh, of the 3rd millennium BC, a rising number of them appear. The marsh bars of the Israelic areas are dating to the Middle Bronze Age up to the early Iron Age. At this time, it seems that this custom is also spreading to neighboring areas as to Crete, the Aegean, and the Hittite ca uh, kingdoms. The most constant tradition is those still found in the desert zone of the west, uh, of southern Levant, uh, where also features dating to early Islamic and probably even modern times exist. In the Nabataean area, more than 2,000 marsh bars, now also denominated as nefesh, were erected, most of them in correlation to graves and partly inscripted with commemorative texts. So what's the reason people started to erect aniconic stones? The Negev Desert area and the Eastern Sinai is a relatively barren and thin inhabited area. Though very arid, the area holds a number of oases and the climate might be more humid in the Neolithic. The landscape is mountainous and structured by canyons and valleys with an uncertain number of caves in their flanks. Caves and also artificial man-made underground structures were in use as habitats since, at least, <coughs> calculatic worshipper culture. In this landscape, it is most likely that the standing stone sites were erected open air for a reason, in many cases even on hilltops. The structures are easily visible, so most likely they were thought of to have a demarcation function. Following the interpretation of the Levantine sites, they might be marking and eliminating, eliminating sacred spaces, the fact that these sacred spaces have been erected open air instead of taking advantage, advantage of natural borders, like using caves, may have the background that the necessary contact to the deities, which use them as a contact zone with their worshippers, needed easy access or preferred the open sky. This might be underlined by the fact that at least 89% of them, uh, of these assemblies in the negative sites are facing east. If this is taken as a reference, to the rising sun, it would be also a valid explanation for their open air side. Thank you for your attention.